Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button, it helps a lot. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, we're about 45 minutes after market close on Tuesday, August 17th. We're going to take a daily look at SoFi. SoFi had another big sell-off today, uh, down 3.78% on $31.5 million in volume. That's after yesterday's minus 4.67% on $26 million volume. And on Friday, down 14.15% on $59.7 million in volume. Obviously, this very strong negative reaction to earnings now bleeding into the lockup that was set to expire after the earnings report came out two days after earnings and so these confluence of events obviously driving driving the price down further additionally last night we were talking about institutional ownership increasing and we'll take a look at that in a minute that does continue to be the case that that institutional ownership as it's reported to us at least to the public we're seeing it still continue to tick up now there is obviously delays in the reporting structure so we're getting delayed information oftentimes or always. And so the degree to which these things are changing day to day can be uh, quite opaque. But we can see here, just, you know, in a very simple sense, previous several days of inflows coming in in large scale orders. And then the last couple of days, that trend starting to reverse and reverse and pick up. So we'll see the degree to which that adds uh, added stress to SoFi and to the price. There is also, from a charting perspective, uh, a bearish crossover here on the MACD, which we'll have to see how that plays out. It'll play out relatively slow because this is on the daily chart. So we'll have to see where we confirm tomorrow and on Thursday, you know, if this is going to continue to increase the distance between the MACD and the signal line in a bearish fashion, then it's probably confirming that it's moving into uh, you know, added bearish momentum, or we could see a situation like this where it's sort of back and forth a little bit. You see back here as well, back and forth a little bit before deciding which direction it's going to go in. Um, place just slightly below the baseline at the moment. So we're just going to have to wait and see. And sometimes that's all you can do when things start to feel like they're kind of falling apart. Um, now on the other side of things, we look at the QQQ here, which tracks the NASDAQ. Um, can get rid of all this old stuff. But um, obviously, there's been some pressure coming in from the macro perspective as uh, you know, NASDAQ coming down nearly a percent today and having its, its own challenging times as folks start to speculate whether or not we've topped out and whether we're due for a correction. Obviously, you see the bearish momentum picking up here. And on the RSI, reflecting that, making a slew of lower lows and lower highs at the same time. So we'll have to see what pressure that puts on as well. But if you start to look at the, the accumulation of various factors, you have the macro factors of the NASDAQ. You have um, the lockup that recently ended. Um, you have the negative reaction to earnings and this all in a stock that you know, for all intents and purposes, this was a nice little run to catch up this 12, 12 and a half percent. But that was after taking this absolute slaughtering that that we took during that first lockup period and that bled in through July, basically. And um, so obviously, so if I just under a lot of pressure and in these types of situations, I honestly don't really know what you do, except you kind of wait, see what establishes do the best that you can with your sort of risk controls. In other words, like keep your risk in check. Don't just um, throw a bunch of money out there to lose and um, just protect the capital that you have in, in the best way that you know how. So that's going to be personal to everyone. And so uh, it's just something to keep in mind so that you can make your own decision on that based on your own situation. But that's what I'm looking at at the moment. Um, if we want to flip over to a couple of other things now, we do have, um, I had lost, is this, yeah, let me reload this puppy here. So at this point, we see institutional ownership 
as NASDAQ is reporting at nearly 40%. So huge, huge increases. I mean, I had showed the um, PDF from, what was it, about 10 days ago or so, where this number was in the low single digits. And so this is you know, what we've been talking about as potentially having a buoying effect on SoFi. But like I said, because of the additional factors that are coming in to add selling pressure, those aren't being able to add any stabilization even into SoFi as far as we can tell. Um, you know, on the other side of things, there's been a lot of talk. So I wanted to briefly touch on today some manipulation factors, many of which we have talked about. And I get sent things in terms of stock manipulation as it pertains to SoFi a lot. And um, I'll just say a few things. One, we have talked <laughs> a lot about manipulation throughout the IPOE and into the SoFi era. And I, of course, I can't expect that everyone caught all those videos along the way and, and they may not be aware, but just know that there's plenty of videos out on IPOE and how heavily shorted it was, how heavy, heavily manipulated it was, and the short squeeze that we were looking at as it was going to get hyped up into the merger date here. That's how we caught this run. And so obviously the short interest is always um, a key component to potential manipulation. We've also done very specific videos on dark pools. Uh, you just search the channel for SoFi dark pools. You talk about the trades that are happening in the dark pools. As, as far as we can see them, at least, we talked about fails to deliver and the impacts that they can have and sort of lining up some of those dates. That's in, I mean, there's several videos that are called SoFi FTDs or fails to deliver. And also in the weird, weird world part two video, which was the most recent weird, weird world one. Um, we, in there, show some graphs that line up dates of increases in, in fluxes in price 30 days or so after large uh, numbers of fails to deliver. So we've been drawing in a lot of these things. And then um, what I wanted to focus on today was sort of like recap some of those things and then also talk again about Max Payne. Now we did previously talk about Max Payne in a video. I didn't do a full video on it. But this is a lot of the, the sort of manipulation messages that I'm getting lately. And I'm getting them via email. I'm getting them via Twitter. I'm getting them as comments on the channel. And yeah, I'm sort of of two mindsets. One, it is good to know where and how manipulation can take place and what to look for as indicators for potential manipulation. That's why we previously were looking at all of those things that I just described. Fails to deliver dark pool trades, short interest, max pain. Yes. Now, the degree to which you can use those things to trade off of, I find quite questionable. Meaning to, to say I'm totally going to ditch uh, fundamentals that I would otherwise follow and just purely go with, well, I think the stock is, is being manipulated in this direction, and so I'm going to play that direction. I mean, you could, and if that, if that works for you, then you should absolutely go that route. Um, I typically take it more along the lines of, like from my own personal situation, of if I think that a stock is being tremendously manipulated to the extent to which there's no rhyme or reason for anything that's happening, and I can't seem to make sense of it, then I just stay out of it. Because I say, until this starts to make sense, and so, until I can start to kind of draw some conclusions here that pan out, and that this is following some sort of logical progression to me, I don't know how to play it. And if that's because it's being manipulated, if it's because I just think it's being manipulated, but it's not, and it's just following some other factors in the markets, um, and I'm just not picking up on them, you know, like I said, I just take that, that as a sign to stay out. And until you can make come to some logical con conclusions and follow those through, um, to me, there's no shame in, in kind of staying away from a stock because you're like, I don't know what's going on with this right now. Um, <clears throat> so take that for what you will. But um, you know, if you have ideas on strategies of how to play stocks that are being manipulated in one way, shape, or form, <clears throat> meaning here's how I know it's being manipulated, here's how I can identify that information, and then here's how I play it when I see those things taking place, you know, you should, I guess you could share them in the comments. That would be one thing. 
you could make videos on it and get the word out. But I encourage folks to do that because I feel like a lot of this stuff comes back my way. And, and it's not that I don't appreciate that people want content on these things, but sort of doing content on things that people want is a double-edged sword in the sense of if it's not exactly what somebody wanted it to be, then they would just be better off making their own content. So I will just say that. Um, but this is also just, remember, I, I kicked this off by saying we have covered Everything I'm going to cover right now, we have covered before in different videos. So you may just want to scroll back through the SoFi playlist and just look for FTDs. Look for, uh, well, you won't see Max Payne, but we'll, I'll show you a tweet in a minute where I have it. But you could look for uh, shorts or short interests. You could look for dark pools. You, you know, you could look for all of these things. And we can continue to do this as time goes on. Um, but I just wanted to say that to me, I don't think that it's all one thing or the other. I think there's value in learning these things and knowing how to piece them together. Um, and then the degree to which you think that, that you can act on any of them, you know, that's for you to decide. Um, but I'm not going to go purely speculating on manipulation and ditch the chart. I'm not going to go purely into the chart and just ignore all the other factors that could be playing a role in a stock. I want to cover like all of the above. And so that's what it's going to be. And, and again, the extent to which you have better info to put out, I would encourage you to do it. Um, and if folks find it valuable, then you will definitely be rewarded <laughs> for, for providing that content. Okay, so here, let's kick things off very simply with short interest. So short interest kicking up a lot today. So now we're getting closer to the 10%. And as I've been saying in the last several videos, we're going to keeping a daily eye on the short interest. Right now, to me, it's not playing a big factor. When it starts to get into the double digits here, uh, then it's going to start raising some eyebrows, both, both from the perspective of this is going to be adding a lot of sell pressure to SoFi. So that's the part of which you may say, uh, this is going to like distort the price of the stock even further. It's going to cause some confusion around supply and demand. I'm going to stay out of it because that's going to distort the price and, and cause potentially additional selling pressure. You may want to do that. You may take the other stance, which you've seen happen in a lot of tickers these days, which is I'm going to go fight these shorts and then you know, you'll have, I guess, some strategy in which to do that. But knowing it is obviously the first part and then being able to decide what you're going to do with that information. But this is the information as it's being reported by Ortex today with their daily updates. So things are picking up. We'll see if that continues to happen or not. Now on the dark pool side of things, the most recent weekly report that shows any activity for SoFi is right here on the ATS issue data we see nearly 8 million shares being traded the week of 712. Now, non ATS issue data, um, same week, 712, SoFi showing 39 and a half million. So 39 and a half million plus, let's just call it 8 million. Um, so what is that? 47 and a half million. 47 and a half million the week of 712. I look at my calculator here. The week of July 12th ended on the 16th. We'll come over here, flip this to weekly. 6716 volume was 79 million on the public side of things that we can see. 716 volume, you see up here, 716, 79.1 million. Now we're saying over here in dark pools, we had eight plus 39 and a half, so 47 and a half in the dark pluses uh, <laughs> versus 79.1 in the light. Okay, so to me, that seems quite heavy. A lot of things happening in the dark pools that aren't impacting the public price of SoFi at the time that those trades are occurring. FTD data, we talked about this as well. A uh, huge number of fails to deliver at the end of June. Now, at that point, the question was, is this tied to or was this tied to the lockup 
expiring and some issues that that created in the chain of events that happened in the background for settlement timeframes when a stock is purchased and sold and the tra transaction that happens in the background, even though to you it looks like it happens instantaneously, it's not the case. Um, so that's the question, the degree to which these were settled was, I mean, being that that number is so high, these were settled pretty fast. And keep in mind, these are cumulative. So these were building up for several, several days and then peaked and then dropped pretty rapidly here by July 1st, had dropped to, a, in my, <laughs> in my the thresholds that I keep in mind, to a very acceptable level, 529,685. So there are plenty of legitimate reasons why a stock can be failed to deliver. Um, go back and watch the failed to deliver videos. I talk about what, what it means, how that can happen, so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, keep in mind that this can and does happen uh, for both legitimate reasons as well as naked short selling, which typically accompanies a strong increase in short interest, which we would look for over here. But at that point, there was very, very low short interest in SoFi. So I don't necessarily think that it was because of naked short selling. I would be more apt to think it was something to do with issues caused by the lockup expiring and shares being sold. But I, I don't know for sure. Now, Max Payne. So I tweeted out on June 29th. So this is, what, nearly two months ago at this point? A month and a half? Um, Max Payne is $20 this Friday. All right, so June 29th. June 29th. So that Friday was July 2nd. Max Payne, $20. So the theory here goes that, uh, well, let's just go to Swaggy. And I think he has... Uh, check out this Max Payne theory. So uh, the idea is that the stock price will be pinned to a specific price at options expiration, also known as OPEX. This would inflict the maximum amount of pain and dollar loss to all options holders, which includes those that bought calls and put contracts. The, may, the Max Payne price is the strike price with the most open contracts of calls and puts that would cause the greatest amount of losses. The theory suggests that a stock's price will gravitate toward the Max Payne price as the expiration date nears. Doing so would cause most of the options to expire worthless and thus inflict Max Payne. Now the advantage here being to the extent to which market makers have sold calls, for example, that they didn't then go and purchase any shares to help cover. So these are naked call options that they've written. They would want those to expire worthless so that they don't have to pony up the money to purchase shares to deliver those, um, those exercised options. And so that's part of the idea. Now, I think that this became very popular here recently because last week, we saw the week close at $14.99, so a penny off of $15, which I don't know. If folks have a way that you can very clearly see historical max pain, I googled around for 15 or 20 minutes today. That was I, couldn't, I just couldn't spend more time looking for it. Uh, if you have one, historical max pain, not forward-looking historical. I saw somebody who had provided a bunch of zip files, but I didn't have the time to dig through the zip files. I went back to 2018, uh, apparently grabbed them from an API from E-Trade or something like that. But um, I, I can look at those for a future video, but I didn't have time today. But if somebody, you know, has that information and wants to provide it, that would be great. We could dig through and see how often Max Payne has played out so that if you, if you knew what Max Payne was, you could hypothetically play the stock over the course of a week to gravitate toward that max pain number. And again, when I saw this <laughs> close at $14.99 last week, I should have tweeted it out so that there was a record. I thought to myself, oh no, everyone is going to get very, very wrapped up in the idea of max pain and, and manipulation toward max pain. So the reason that I say, oh no, is just because if we look here again, $20 this Friday, June 29th, the Friday was July 2nd. July 2nd, we closed $18.08. So this was a very hopeful tweet that I had put out saying, uh, my goodness, I hope <laughs> that because Max Payne is $20 this Friday, that we 
can move toward that max pain. At that point, we're talking about a gamma squeeze, which is another situation that's sort of like fallout from kind of like inverse manipulation. But you can look at SoFi gamma squeeze. We're going to search that on the channel. You can find out what that is. Take a look. Um, I was hoping that we would move toward max pain at that point because I thought that it, it brought with it the risk or the opportunity for a gamma squeeze. But that's not what we saw. And, and I put that out on the 29th, so that would have been the Tuesday. So it would have left us plenty of days to try to run up to that $20 and pin it there. But again, on July 2nd, what we saw was it closing at 18.08, so kind of nowhere near max pain. I mean, it's what 10% off. Um, or okay, some folks are gonna yell that it's not no way off, it's not so far off, but it's not fourteen ninety nine for a fifteen dollar max pain. It's not it's you would you would have if you had been playing the stock to try to get to twenty dollars, I think you would have felt that you were quite far off. Now here's the only other one that I found um from Googling around, and I, I don't know that this is accurate, but I'm I was trying to find other places where people had recorded it since I couldn't just find historical um resource that had logged the max pain but friday's max pain is 25 dollars on june 21st doesn't um 25 dollars sound great at this point okay so june 21st was a monday so the 25th it was 25 dollars june 25th 25 dollars let's see june 25th 25 dollars it closed that week at 1850 Okay, so this is just to say, yes, I know it looks suspicious. If Max Payne last week was $15, which I don't know for sure that it was, but maybe it was, and then it closed at $14.99. And I'm not saying that because there are instances where it did not get near Max Payne that's, that it is not manipulated for this purpose sometimes. But how you know when sometimes is is another question. Um, and so that would be that would be my question to folks. How do you know when it's likely to get pinned to max pain and when it's not? Because here we're seeing again one sort of hearsay that's coming my way, which is $15 last week, close to $14.99, and then two, one of which is my own, recorded. Max Payne, that it was not that close to it. So the next one that we can look at, we're only a few days away. Um, Swaggy, Swaggy Stocks does this uh, on an ongoing basis. You can always come in and check. Expiration, 820, which is Friday. Max Payne, 1550. Wouldn't we all be exuberant if we closed at 1550 or 1549? 1548 <laughs> this week wouldn't that be seen as a huge victory wouldn't that have folks thinking maybe that was the floor maybe that was the bottom did you catch the knife did you get it did you get it you know lots of speculation and i get it i understand it but um i'm trying to dig through what's real and what's hype and what's partial truth and what is more than partial truth and uh this is just me trying to do that. So let's see, since we're here in real time, if we can close this week at or extremely close to 1550. Okay, but if we are 10% or more off, to me, that's a clear miss. Because um, if you have a, a price target in mind and you miss it by 10% in the market, that's at least in my fundamentals that that's you're too far off <laughs> so um let's see what happens but uh this is just me trying to put some info out there that either folks haven't seen that i've put out before being tons of manipulation data there's probably um videos that i've put out called something something so fine manipulation um so you could just search the channel for that too um but the degree to which folks think that I don't cover manipulation, uh, this is just to show you uh, we do. And I'm actually super interested in those things. Um, I love a good theory. 
And so I will continue to do so. The weird, weird world, if it wasn't apparent from the last video, is strongly going in the direction of what is going on here. Okay, and part three will come out as soon as I can get out. They took they take a lot longer to put together than they probably look because they're just some stupid Google slide. Um, and they probably look like I just slapped them together over the course of 20 minutes and then talk about it, but that's not the case. Um, and I'll get it out as soon as I can. So in the meantime, we have a falling knife to deal with. We have this atrocious reaction to earnings to deal with. We have, like I said, you know, this plummeting price, even in the face of strong inflows from institutions, as far as we can tell. And um, so trying to keep an eye on that at the same time and sort of figure out what happens. So whatever it is that you base your decision on, charts, manipulation, a mixture of them, something else completely, you know, I wish you the best of luck. It's, uh, if you go back to my early, early IPOE videos, I've always said I'm interested in this ticker because it's in a weird an interesting situation. You go back to IPOE, I talk about all the weird events that are sort of converging. It's like the strange confluence of events and wanting to see how it played out. And that continues to be the case now that it's SoFi. And so I'm super interested in all the wackiness that surrounds this ticker and has surrounded it for almost its entire life cycle. And so I'll continue to, to look into those things. But, um, you know, the degree to which anyone is interested or not interested in it, um, you know, that that is, of course, up to you. But in any case, I need to go spend time with my family. And um, I appreciate you watching. And leave your own thoughts below. I'm sure you will. Folks are very excitable in the comments. And uh, we'll see where we go from here. But tomorrow is another day. We'll see what happens on this MACD bearish crossover. And someone's shouting, or dozens of people are shouting at their screen right now, charts don't matter. Charts don't matter anymore. All right. Have a good night, folks. I will see you in the next video.